here with uh, Steve Eady, Secretary Treasurer, NJA. Good to see you, Steve. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Um, lots of issues that I've talked to you and your colleagues about, but one of the ones that I wanted to talk to you about is this whole ending quote, Chapter 78. What is Chapter 78? <laughs> Why should people watching, even if they're not public employees or public school educators, care about it? What is it? Well, long story short, in 2011, it's a law that was passed that has public employees pay a portion of their health care premium The health and costs. pension reform. Right, exactly. Right. So it increased our pension payments. And then the part we're really more talking about is the health care premium sharing. Because what it does now is it has educators, public employees, but educators in our case, paying upwards of 35% of their premiums, which, of course, is a skyrocketing cost. Now, we're not saying that educators shouldn't pay a fair share of their uh, employee benefits. But what happened now, you have employees paying ten, ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars or more a year crippling people that are working on you know, educator salaries, which you all know traditionally aren't the highest. You know, the trade-off as we got in the profession going back decades was you took a less salary because benefits are part of the package right. to make you whole in this case. But now the impact is salaries haven't got up much at all, especially with what's so happened in the financial world and things that have impacted public education. But the huge increase in the health care costs has really crippled where public educators in many cases haven't seen a raise or won't see a raise for years, if ever, again. You know, the devil's advocate question is sure. obvious, and you've dealt with it before, and I'm going to put it on the table. Someone says, but the pension system is going broke. We don't have the money. We've got to make these changes. And if teachers aren't going to make more, hey, listen, at least we'll save the system. You say what to those folks? Well, I say that's that I understand that the pension system is in trouble, but that's larger part not fault of anyone. I never missed a pension payment, but the state, of course, granted themselves, I guess you want to call it a holiday, going back decades and decades. The holiday is otherwise known as not paying. Not, not, that's a nice way of saying not, not paying, contributing. Not contributing. So, and I'm not blaming what it's Democrats and Republican governors all along going back from when Whitman made the original raid in the pension fund, uh, which at the time, you know, hindsight always 2020. But um, we earn those pensions. It's part of what goes along with being a public employee all those years and to tell people at the end of their career, in the middle of their career, hey, you were planning for this, the way you're going to set up your retirement, which people deserve, is not going to be there any longer, is really tragic. Um, and it's really time for the government to do their fair share. We, we bail out large corporations. We give out corporate welfare and tax rebates and abatements all around the state. We always forget about how about funding the pension for the deserving educators. Let me ask you this. Your educational background, you've been teaching for how long? 24 years I was in the classroom. And the subject is? High school social studies. What drew you? And I'm fascinated by this, particularly at a time where there's so much. Uh, the discourse, let's just say, is anything but civil. Mm -hmm. It's nasty, it's ugly, it's personal, it's degrading, and you're teaching social studies. <laughs> How do you use that horrific, if you will, and that's not even commentary, you don't need me to tell you that, horrific political environment in a social studies class to yeah. teach? Well, personally, Or do I, you ignore it? I don't. I mean, personally, I was very fortunate. I taught uh, the last 24 years and most of those years in a class called Global Studies. It was a global senior, studies. Global Studies. The senior elective, and a lot of it was on current events, current issues. We did current events every single day and linked them to the idea of interdependence within societies. And so current events were something that allowed us to examine the world and really bring, you know, seniors. They're the ones going out into the workplace, into education, wherever it may be. So having them understand the forces at work, it was, I enjoyed the fact that I can engage these students in meaningful conversations about their future. And I look back, and you know, I have a notebook where I kept every day's current events going back six or seven years, maybe more. And I would look through it sometimes and think, look at what's happened over the course of time. And of course, history repeating itself. But going back to your question, utilizing that as a way to engage students so they become critical thinkers in hoping to roll back some of the horrificness, if that's a word, I made it, it a word, is. that we're dealing with today so they can be informed thinkers, critical thinkers, and part of the solution rather than get caught up in the rhetoric and everything that goes By on. By the way, you're going to have an English teacher challenging us <laughs> online <laughs> saying whether horrificness is a word or not. I just not. made it a word. And I just <laughs> yeah. agreed that it was yeah, a word. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm actually not sure. <laughs> but let me follow up on that. Someone says, you know, and I, I actually wrote a piece recently. Um, if you look on our website, mm -hmm. you can find it there. <clears throat> and the whole essence of the piece, which I, is relevant to your work as a social studies teacher, is that many people believe what they believe, and they very often don't want to find out anything else that contradicts what they think they believe and only go to sources that reinforce True. what they believe. Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong. There are definitely a, a large group of students and 
people in society that find their news from a convenient source. You want to be validated. So whether it's CNN, Fox News, I always like BBC News as sort of a, you know, a neutral third party for sure. whatever that means. But um, it, it becomes easy in the world. See, today, I'm right. See, they look. No, they look at it. See, I'm right. Now, as a social studies teacher, I'm sorry for interrupting. That's right. How do, how do you teach students that even if you think you believe this? that reading someone else's point of view is part of being a quote, you use the term critical thinker. Right. How do you even teach that? What I try to do is, I, listen, if this is what you believe, you truly believe in whatever that opinion is, you found someone that agrees with you, my point to them is find someone that doesn't agree with you because you only improve your own argument when you understand fully the counterpoint of somebody else. Steve, I'm sure you wanted to talk about a whole range of issues, but this issue's not just been on my mind, but a lot of people watching are asking, how can we improve the quality of our public discourse? And what is the role of educators, particularly teachers, educators in social studies, to help our students be more open-minded, dare I say? And I thank you for um, indulging me and our audience. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it, Steve. Pleasure. Well done. Thank you. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by New Jersey Sharing Network, TD Bank, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, PSENG, Atlantic Health System, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.